This is a Fox 5 and Hot 97 special edition of Street Soldiers. 50 years of hip-hop with Lisa Evers. I'm so glad you're joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers, honoring women in hip hop. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. This is part of our continuing coverage of hip hop's 50th anniversary. We're looking at the tremendous accomplishments already made by women and the even bigger promise of what is to come. From Queen Latifah to Cardi B, there's a growing list of female trailblazers who have changed the game. Double XL editor in chief Vanessa Satin says there are many female hip hop success stories who are powerful cultural forces in their own right with their talent and authenticity. I think we'll always be talking about Queen Latifah. We'll always be talking about Salt and Pepper. We'll always be talking about um, Nikki and Foxy and and um, and Cardi. You know, for her wins with the Grammys mm -hmm. and. Kim for what she uh, set, you know, uh, a tone for women for um, Lauren Hill, the impact she had. She almost stands alone. Rapper Rod Digger rose to fame as the first lady of Busta Rhymes' flip mode squad at a time when women had to be affiliated with a male artist or group in order to be seen and heard. She went on to a solo career as an artist and actor. She says as the culture has grown, so have the opportunities for women. You have women dominating charts. Uh, you have women... Um, in the in the boardrooms, the the executives, they're you know they're on the field. They they've uh, they've actually transcended from trying to scratch and claw their way into the business. They're they're pretty much running the business. Emerging hip hop artist Lady London looks to the greats for inspiration as she builds a multifaceted career that would have been unthinkable a decade ago. I've always just been very inspired by confident women who walk in stride and in pride of, of who they are and embracing their craft 100 percent so definitely any type of boldness or confidence you see more um mainstream acceptance you see endorsement deals you see um you know headline performances you see um collaborations you see all of these things that didn't exist because there wasn't a huge thriving women in the hip-hop um uh, community there's been a lot of progress behind the scenes, too. Let's find out what our panel has to say. Joining me for this conversation, Lady London. She's a hip hop artist and she's working on new music right now. If you were at Summer Jam last year at the festival stage, you saw her perform there. Lady London, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. We appreciate it. Also with us is Vanessa Satin. She's editor in chief of Double XL Magazine. She has interviewed, she's discovered a lot of the newest hottest artist throughout the years. She's interviewed the biggest names and knows the ins and the outs of the hip hop business like nobody else. I'm just going to put it right out there like that. Vanessa, great to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Also with us is Rod Digga. You know Rod Digga, rapper and actress. She's also known as the first lady of the Flip Mode Squad. Rod Digga, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having me, Lisa. No, we really, we really appreciate it. Um, Radiga, I want to start with you on this. As you look at where women are now in hip hop compared to where things were and opportunity wise for women when you were just getting started, what do you see happening? Uh, well, I definitely like the fact that there's, you know, the whole um, token chick in the click thing, if, if you will, that was very prevalent, especially in my era i'm glad to see that that has slowly uh dissipated women are thriving on their own they don't necessarily need the cosign of men and they don't need the men to to carry them throughout their careers now so i think that's great like i wish you know i i, I wish that it, in my era that the women would have been taken more seriously on their own, just as, you know, their own entities, as opposed to always being attached to the, the male counterparts in their crew. So I do see that as the biggest difference of the, you know, the crop of women today. And I, and I, I think it's great. So they don't need a cosign from a, from a male star in order to, to make it on their own. Well, be clear, you know, this is still a, a, a male dominated sport, but I feel like the the actual longevity and the arcs of their career don't begin and end with the, you know, the, the captain of the crew, if you will. Like, you don't even necessarily need to be attached to a crew because there were so many dope 
females in the 90s that I feel like if they had a a crew that they could be associated with, their their careers probably would have went a little further. I feel like that was a prerequisite to be successful, in, in, um, especially in the 90s. So now women can just kind of thrive, you know, with or without the the crew or that male cosign. No, absolutely. Vanessa, when you when you look at the, you know, we've talked like years ago and not that long ago about like, where are all the women stars? Of course, there was always Nicki Minaj, but where are all the other women stars? And now it seems like there's so many and, and some of the biggest stars, period, are, are female. What do you see happening? Uh, just like Roger said, I mean, you don't need to be the first lady of a crew anymore. You can stand alone um, that we're seeing support for women where people are really listening to them. They're on the charts and they're standing as individuals um, where they don't have to be backed by a group of men. They don't have to go on tour with them. They don't have to be introduced on stage with them. And um, for a while, it was kind of sometimes it would be only like one lady could star at a time or a few ladies could star at a time. And now you're seeing there's more camaraderie with the younger women than there. Uh, well, not that there has ever been before, but then there is a uh, thought of, because a lot of people like to pit the new artists against each other or female artists against each other sometimes, but you're seeing camaraderie and you're seeing them get support from um, most of the industry, you know, and you're and you're seeing them climb the charts. You know, we see right now Ice Spice is on the charts this week creeping up and it's not about her being the head of a crew or it's not about just being one woman at the same time because there's also Koi with us hit right now and Glorilla's out right now and you still have the parties and the Nikki's that are just as relevant. Um, so you're seeing just more weight to the whole idea of there being women in hip hop where it has, where it's not just a few at a time or where um, they can't collaborate together. Cause we've seen a lot of that as well. No. And that's been, a, that's been a nice change. Lady London, tell us how did you come to get interested in, in launching your hip hop career? Completely haphazardly by mistake. Um, I was in a full, uh, medical school situation. I have two degrees in medical sciences. And so um, when I started my rap career, it was like kind of out of nowhere, but social media definitely plummeted me to the to the, to the far, farthest extent um, as far as music goes. And so I'm just, I'm just thankful for the resources that we have now that we didn't have prior to. No, and that's a good point that you're bringing up. Like the, the social media has, social the explosion of social media has made it a lot more accessible to a lot, a lot of other people. Rod Digger, what about that? I think that now you can, you know, you can pretty much be your own everything. Whereas when there wasn't social media, you you literally had to go from city to city to state to state all across the country to let people know you're dropping an album on this date. And that process would take months. Like now you can literally sit at home and push a button and the whole world has access to you. So it definitely helps in terms of uh, marketing, less marketing dollars being spent. Uh, you don't have to have people running around the city posting what we call snipes all over the place, you know, just to let people know what's going on with you. And, I feel like social media is pretty much dictating pop culture. So whatever social media and the internet says is cool is pretty much going to influence and dictate what's what's you know what's going on in life. It's you know it's art imitating life, imitating art. No, definitely, Vanessa. Do you th do you see social media as a help or a hindrance in terms of the evolution of the culture? Basically, what we would we would call the culture. I mean, it's both. For the most part, it's a help. You get yourself out there. You don't need everybody. Um, you don't need to uh, sell CDs out of the back of your car. You don't need to depend on just streaming services. You get your personality personality out there. You separate yourself from media outlets having to do it for you or your label having to do it for you where you can speak directly to your fans. I think the hindrance is if you misuse it, you know, um, or abuse it. And we've seen some artists thrive, like a Kendrick Lamar, um, I guess it's a male uh, an example, but a Kendrick Lamar uh, minimally used it and then that being to his favor because when he does come on um it's wow kendrick's book or you see somebody on the other hand using it all the time like a megan or like a nikki well nikki's on the fence a little bit lately but um who's shown you a lot of their lives because of it and a lot of their personal lives and their interactions with their loved ones or you know uh, snippets of new music so it really depends on how you control social media what outlet you choose to use right twitter instagram TikTok, um and and 
the what you make of it. Um, but as a whole, you've seen social media affect hip hop in such a, a significant way. Um, it would make sense. It would affect the new artists, the female artists, the male artists, the established artists, all in different ways, depending on the way they utilize it. We'll be right back after this. Brad Diggle, what about the authenticity question? Do you, because people people say one of the other big changes and evolutions that has come is there's a pressure now because everything is so public, with, especially with the social media of the artists being such an important part of their career, that there may not be that same individuality that there was with, with females in the past. What do you think about that? Um, I couldn't agree with that statement more. I, I don't understand it. I think that is, I think that's just the part where the business now dictates the culture, where the culture used to dictate the business. I, I feel like the, the, the suits used to come out to the streets and figure out what was, uh, you know, what the culture was and then figure out a way to monetize that. And now I feel like it's the other way around. I feel like the suits are now sitting around in boardrooms and saying, this is, you know, based on the metrics and the algorithms, this is what's hot, this is what's not. So we have to mass produce this hot thing right here in order to meet our bottom lines. And that's what's being, you know, that's what's being basically dictated to the new artist that if you want to sign on my label i need to see this 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 and this and and even the artists themselves thanks to social media thanks to everything else they they see what is working um in pop culture and what isn't and everyone's just kind of following that mode and i don't you know i i can't really i can't really say what's causing it but um it's it's definitely uh, different from what it used to be. Definitely a change, Lady London. In, ter in terms, of, in terms of that, the the metrics versus the authenticity. Or how how do you deal with these issues in your career? I hate it. I hate that it's a numbers game for everything. You know, they always look at your Spotify numbers first. They always look at your Apple Music numbers first before they realize the substance of what you bring to the table, what you are able to, um, you know, just kind of diversify the game with. Um, I wish that it wasn't an algorithm that they based everything off of and that they really looked at pure talent um, because oftentimes they just overlook what's right in front of their faces and they have to play catch up later. But um, I'm definitely one of those artists that you, you know, you, you're going to find out. You're going to find out exactly what's, what's underway. Vanessa, when you, when you look at the, you look at the women, you know, the, the female icons in, in hip hop, who do you see throughout the years that has left a lasting impact? Well, besides Rod Digga, of course, for everything she's contributed to hip hop, um, you can't deny the impact of Nikki and Foxy and Kim and um, and Cardi even. And, you know, back in the day, Salt and Peppa and, you know, um, every all the women that came before, you know, because it was it was a man's game. It is a man's game. It's still a man's game. So any woman who came into there and, and put their stamp and made their way through it and was able to find a place in the game, the Mia X's, you know, uh, from from different locations, from places we've never seen from New York, the you know, the 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 town that hip-hop came from you have to um take your hats off to them you have to give them respect because they were a woman in a man's world trying to make it their own and finding their importance you know and it's interesting because for the 50th anniversary where you know I've, I've done a few interviews about women in hip-hop and uh you know the answer kind of is we shouldn't just be celebrating them in the 50th anniversary we should be celebrating in the 49th and the 51st as we look ahead now to the to the next 50 what would be some of the things that you've seen that you would like to see happen, particularly for, for female artists in hip hop? I mean, I think there's a lot of opportunity. You know, I've seen Megan Thee Stallion get tons of, uh, you know, endorsement deals that I've never seen uh, artists get before. I think the opportunities are there. Lady London, as you look ahead, what, what do you see as uh, some of the things you're hoping for, for yourself personally and also for, for females in the culture? Um, just a, a equilibrium, just a, a sense of balance between what's happening currently and what we know hip hop to have been 50 years ago. Um, I hope that we continue to um, to pioneer a shift in things um, and just and just grow the craft from where it is now into into something much bigger. Um, 
I do hope we get back to lyricism a bit or that it's more appreciated, especially um, on the women's side of things, just because I know I know so many women who have so much to bring to the game um, lyrically. And, and, you know, I hope that they get more light this this year and in the coming years and next 50 years. I feel like my answer to this question is always the same, just more, you know, more balance. You know, I want to see. I want to see the Nubian goddess just as prosperous as the Sex Pistols. I would just like to see it all on a level playing field. And if I think if we, the artists, just kind of put more emphasis into that, we can dictate the trends. Like it's it's up to us really to show the people what's cool. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Street Soldiers on women in hip hop. You can watch it again and share it on our Fox 5 NY YouTube page. Remember, use your mind, it's your best weapon.